Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Day of the Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about XRP and also XLM. And yes, we are going to be discussing generational wealth as well as the digital revolution that is happening right before our eyes. So sit back, relax, and let's jump in. But before we fully start this video, I just want to ask if you guys are new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and turning notifications on as it does help the channel grow immensely. And I am also uploading daily crypto content pretty much all the time so with that being said definitely hit that like button as well to help the channel get recognized more and let's jump in so first and foremost we've talked about xrp and xlm a lot on this channel in fact i just uploaded a video on these two in in terms of percentage moves as well as how they moved together in a cohesive fashion now we are seeing a lot of updates happening throughout the market right now uh, we're seeing a lot of xrp sort of news and you know of course it's trending everywhere pre because of the you know nice price movement that we've seen in the recent weeks um, as well as you know some price appreciation you know up 13.71 percent in the seven day span a lot more trading volume flowing in and uh, as well as XRP or XLM right Stellar is actually updating their ecosystem on a day-to-day -day basis doing incredible things and we're gonna be discussing that and talking about it as well these two have a ton of great potential especially considering how huge the future for digitization through the financial markets are and I'm very excited for the future of this entire space and I could not tell you guys how bullish I am on crypto now, before we fully jump into this video, I just want to let you guys know if you guys do want my personal, you know, trading styles or anything like that in terms of exit strategies and all that kind of stuff, you guys are more than welcome to get it on my website and cashofficial.com. The best product on here for your dollar is the Ultimate Crusader Trading Bundle Pack, which includes pretty much everything that you see here, which is everything on the website as well as all future content for free. So with that being said, if you guys are interested in something like that, that is pretty much the best one. Um, but you guys are not obligated to purchase anything, like I said. Um, so, you know, if you guys are interested, you guys are interested. But let's move on. So first off, I have this tweet from Kyle McLean. Now he's saying, yes, I did buy XRP under 20 cents, as did I. And I bought, you know, some the other day at six. It doesn't really matter where you enter. I know a lot of people in this game um, have this problem where they're like, well, dude, I bought so much at, you know, 40 cents. You know, so I'm not going to be, you know, purchasing here at a dollar. It's just way too expensive. But that's the problem, right? Understanding what an asset is. For example, Kyle here is buying all the way through 2019, 2020, and 2021. Didn't care what the price was. I just bought. I quit my career in banking tech last year. XRP will surprise people, but it really shouldn't. And it really shouldn't because if you do the research, if you do the proper research, you can understand how huge these assets are going to be. A problem that Stellar actually has is liquidity, which we're going to talk about how they fixed it just recently. And XRP is solving the on-demand liquidity problem. They are pretty much, you know, getting rid of Nosho Bostro accounts and pretty much solving the major pre-funded account issue. That's huge. Of course, anybody in the banking scene could tell you how huge it is. And Kyle obviously knows. And like I said, when you're investing into something at 20 cents, you know, investing at a dollar might be a little bit harder to do so because you're like, well, I've already bought at 20 cents. So why should I buy here? It's the case on if you are looking for long term wealth or short term wealth, long term wealth and XRP will bring you generational wealth. I really do believe that because especially if you look at the back end things that Ripple are actually doing and achieving, you'd understand how quickly things will move. But also, it's the idea that if you bought at 20 cents and you buy at a dollar, knowing you know it's going to five to ten dollars plus does it really matter you're going to make money you're gonna make a lot of money as well so it doesn't really matter all that much if you're buying at a higher price target don't let your psychology mess with you now let's talk about what stellar did today listen closely to this update from the stellar organization people should care about protocol 18 and automated market makers generally because of the fact that it brings such tremendous value to the ecosystem. Protocol 18, uh, to, in the event that actually the, the community accepts it and that the, the votes come through in favor of it, uh, is going to be really transformational for the network, I think, because really what we're all about is asset issuance and payments and really focused on cross-border payments. And that's what Stellar is particularly good at. But in order to have that, we need to have liquidity. And so what protocol 18 allows is a different, uh, an additional methodology to bring liquidity to the network. So combining the Stellar DEX with protocol 18, which allows for 
um, liquidity pools is just going to be a, a really automated market maker is just going to be a really phenomenal opportunity to be able to bring that liquidity to the network so that we can even get more powerful with respect to the cross-border payments piece. One of the things that I'm most proud of as someone who supports an open source foundation and uh, that's focused on development uh, for a project like this is the fact that we respond to and we're very connected with the ecosystem. So Protocol 18 is the perfect example of how you want open source to work. We had the, the we had the needs in the, in the network itself from liquidity and the need for liquidity. And then we had a really deeply engaged ecosystem and, and um, participants in the ecosystem that had a lot to say about how they thought that Protocol 18 should come together. So that inner working about how the Stellar Development Foundation developers, in addition to the developers in the ecosystem, really came together to create what we think is going to be really transformational opportunity for the network is pretty awesome. All right. Well, if you want to find more information about Protocol 18... Uh and that is the base point where I've been talking about a lot of innovation actually happening on the Stellar you know, ecosystem. They're continuing to build out this incredible ecosystem. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about XLM with XRP because, you know, oh, one's going to kill the other, blah, blah. That's not the case point, right? First off, this automated market maker functionality is pretty cool. Um, in fact... This is incredible technology, and this is going to allow a lot more, you know, innovation to happen on the ecosystem, as she did mention. And this is also going to allow them to have a lot more power on the ecosystem as well. And it's going to provide a lot of liquidity and a lot of, you know, those problems that they're trying to solve with cross-border, you know, payments and stuff. They're going to be focusing on that. Now, like I said, I know what a lot of people are thinking. They're thinking Stellar versus, you know, XRP. No, it's not that. Okay. XRP and XLM are totally focused on two completely different niche audiences and they're focused on completely different use cases as well. That doesn't mean that they're not going to work in the same fields at some point in time because they, they most likely will. And when we're talking about that, we also talk about the fact that these two specific assets, there's enough money flowing through the cross-border payments sector for both of these to get a little bit of a slice of the pie. A lot of assets in the space are actually going to be achieving a lot of the, you know, pie as well. So definitely keep a close eye out on that. Now, I do want to talk to you guys about XRP. So a lot of people are saying how to make money with XRP, sell it and buy Bitcoin. A lot of these Bitcoin maxis, it's funny, right? Now, just listen closely to what you are seeing around the world. First off, the bearable bull is completely correct on this. Settlement, Ripple IPO, Flare, Flare Finance, airdrops, trust lines, waiting, all of that stuff, right? But also, he forgets to mention the U.S.-based clients rejoining the team after the settlement. We also talk about a lot more adoption through the ODL service, a lot more corridors opening up. There is a ton of innovation. Prepare yourselves for the mass. It, it's a massive cascading factor to really look at, and that is that settlement. The settlement is honestly, if you think about it, the SEC has allowed us to have a ticking time bomb that will explode XRP into the most amount of price appreciation that we've ever seen in our entire existence. This will shut out the 66,000% run in 2017-2018. This will march us forward on in time beyond many other assets by having that clarity. So prepare yourselves. And talking about clarity, we do see our Brad Garling House 2020. In five years, we are Amazon. 2020, SEC versus Ripple. 2020 to 2021, internal testing. 2022, industry migration begins with XRP clarity. 2025, all financial institutions must be compliant. Timelines fit well, huh? And that is the base point, right? There's a ton of timelines to really watch for. This five-year span is really kind of shaping up to be the base point for adoption through that ISO 2022 ad adoption with DLTs. And here you guys do see that. And of course, interoperability is global through Q&T or quant networks, which I've always discussed is a huge use case um, in terms of an asset. And then of course, what are the new timelines leading to November 2022? Here they are first in 2020, building awareness about the change through the various resources Swift makes uh, available and assessing the impacts in collaboration with vendors, if any. And uh, of course, we do see, you know, this is all cross-border payments, of, of course, second throughout 2020 and 2021, implementing the defined solution for adopting the change, testing it internally and preparing for the further testing on the real network. Third, throughout 2021 and 2022, testing on the network with and without selected correspondence and preparing for going live. And then, of course, we have the ISO 2022 uh, timeline for adoption. The migration will end by November 2025. Hmm, pretty interesting, right? And of course, here's all those links for, you know, those articles in this. But when we're talking about this massive adoption, 
XRP plays a vital role in the future of finance. I've always said it, XRP will be a huge name in the game. No matter how much the SEC wants to try to kill it, it is not going anywhere. And anybody who is paying attention and understanding what XLM and XRP are doing together, or I should say apart, whatever you want to say, however you want to mention it, there are two incredible assets within this financial scene, and there are two fintech giants that will continue to grow and grow and grow as time further is on. So definitely keep a close eye out on these years to come because they are going to be very vital for a ton of wealth to be made and prospered in. Now we also see here China CBDC has been used for $9.7 billion of transactions. Some 140 million people have open wallets for the ECNY. So CBDCs are doing incredibly well around the world. 10 million corporate accounts have been created as well. 34 million individual and corporate ECNY wallet users who have uh, conducted transactions worth $5.4 billion. This is huge. So obviously CBDCs are a huge success around the world. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a lot more adoption for crypto and CBDCs. Now we also see our mayor elect Eric Adams commits to make New York City more crypto friendly, which this is great for anybody who is in New York, you'd obviously understand how hard it is to buy crypto and get into crypto. So I think that this is incredible to say the least. And like I said, I think crypto adoption and acceptance is going to grow as we do move forward on in time. Uh, I, I don't need to tell you guys that we are already seeing that. Also, we do see our France moves ahead of China in battle for CBDC supremacy. This is great to see because we do know that in terms of France and all that kind of stuff, you know, we are seeing, you know, XRP make some moves around the world, especially in the UK and stuff. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we had some ties to you know, France at some point in time. But like I said, this is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of innovation happening around the world. And also with France moving ahead in terms of CBDC adoption, the US needs to pick up the pace. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm just saying, you know, we're stifling innovation as time goes on. Now we also see here JP Morgan reports that CBDCs can save firms $100 billion a year in cross-border cost. And this is the main focus point. This is what I've been talking about in terms of XRP with cross-border cost, right? Something like a CBDC or even a bridge currency like XRP could allow a ton of money to be saved for these massive firms and these huge corporate giants. Why do you think that they would not pay an astronomical amount out to get that technology? In fact, look at this. A report estimates that nearly $24 trillion in wholesale payments that, may, that have uh, moved across borders each year. Banks incur more than $120 billion in total transaction cost. That is not a uh, uh, that is a huge problem, right? That is not good. This excludes potential hidden costs and trapped liquidity and delayed settlements. Wow, what are they getting at here? I mean, that's uh, I don't know. I mean, that seems like a pretty big problem. That's something I know could solve it very, very easily. And they're of course talking about global corporations. And of course, the case for CBDCs is to address pain points and cross-border payments is very compelling. The bulk of today's wholesale cross-border payments process remains suboptimal due to multiple uh, intermediaries between the sending and receiving banks, often resulting in high transaction costs, long settlement times, and lack of transparency on the status of payments. It's pretty much everything that XRP is trying to solve. And of course, they're talking about corridors in the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, all of the areas mostly that uh, XRP is in. I don't know. Seems a little bit weird to me that they would be mentioning things like that. Just my overall opinion. Um, and then, of course, we do see your Goldman Sachs boost tokenization efforts with new partnership. Again, they're getting into the digital asset space and tokenization space. As we continue to build out our tokenization capabilities, we need solutions that could rapidly capture the full complexity and diversity of assets at the heart of our business or both digitally native or tokenized traditional assets and be interoperable across multiple blockchains. So a lot of crypto adoption through tokenization and digitization, cross-border payment flows are going to, of course, grow at an astronomical rate. And I do think that we really need to innovate very, very fast with something like XRP or XLM or any sort of asset that is solving the bridge problem. So with that being said, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are, just beautiful. This is Nick. Peace out, guys.